The Great Pyramid Also known as the Pyramid of Khufu or Pyramid of Cheops is one of the grandest ancient structures of the world. Still mystifying and baffling architectural experts all over the world on how such a feat could have been constructed in ancient times. It's missing the peak somehow, so it currently measures around 139 metres tall, but where the point would converge it would have been around 146.5 metres tall. Each of the base sides measure just over 230 metres each. So yeah, basically this structure is gigantic, even by today's standards. Made with approximately 2.3 million blocks, each weigh in between about 2.4 and up to 80 tonnes for some of the largest blocks, and many being cut and fit together with almost laser precision. It's also aligned so accurately with True North that it still remains more accurate than the Royal Observatory in London, which is notable for its alignment, was purposely built on a location where the Prime Meridian passes through, and gave its name to the Greenwich Mean Time we're all familiar with. But then again, it was built in 1675, so that's not really saying that it's better than, for example, today's modern capabilities. The Great Pyramid is also the only eight-sided pyramid, which you can only really see from above quite high as it's quite subtle. It would have been amazing to look at in its glory, cased in polished limestone and would have had completely smooth, almost shiny surfaces reflecting the sun with magnificence. There are still a few casing stones attached, but most of them got shaken off either in the 1400s by an earthquake apparently, or by theft for other constructions. The Great Pyramid was supposed to have been constructed a long time before the invention of any power tools or modern techniques of leverage that we're aware of, and in the time of just copper and bronze tools. And you can't even squeeze a pin in between the joints, they're that fine. It's believed generally to have been built during the Old Kingdom around 2560 BC, in the reign of Pharaoh Khufu and it's also believed by Egyptologists to be the tomb for Khufu. However, no mummy has ever been found in the Great Pyramid, or any other pyramid in Egypt as a matter of fact. But that could be due to tomb robbing possibly, as it was a problem as early as the early dynastic period. For example, in around 2670 BC, the pyramid complex of Djoser was constructed with the chambers and tombs purposely filled with debris to prevent theft, but the tomb was still broken into and looted, even the king's mummy was stolen. Also, the Pyramid of Menkore was broken into not long after it was sealed, and that's the smallest of the three large pyramids at Giza. Tutankhamun's tomb was also broken into twice in ancient times, but then somehow it luckily managed to get buried during the construction of Ramesses VI tomb nearby, and was preserved then until its discovery in 1922, so that was pretty fortunate. There are also no hieroglyphics, carvings, artwork or inscriptions anywhere in the Great Pyramid, whereas Egyptian tombs, especially for notable people, usually seem to feature at least some of these features. So even if the so-called tombs have been looted a long time ago, you'd think we would still find evidence of it being an authentic tomb, but instead it just raises more questions to its purpose. Even the so-called sarcophagus is suspicious, and has a strange erosion or damage on one of the corners, where some think it was damaged when removing the lid, but a lid has also never been found. The internal layout of the pyramid is interesting to say the least, and is the only pyramid to feature such chambers and shafts. Many believe that the air shafts out of the king's and queen's chambers are aligned with certain star systems, but if they were, then why? As for a start, the shafts bend so you can't see all the way up them, and these shafts are tiny, only 20cm by 20cm, so you couldn't exactly climb up one. And so we've explored two of the shafts in the Queen's Chamber with exploration robots purposely designed for the task. And in both shafts, they came across limestone blocking doors, which had curious fixtures on them, possibly looking like handles of some sort. They went back with another mission anyway to drill through one of the stones to see what was on the other side, and they were met with yet another blocking stone just in front of it but the robot did manage to snap some pictures of the area at the other side of this blocking door, and it caught some curious hieroglyphic writing which almost looks scribbled, almost like as a note or done in a hurry. The air shafts from the king's chamber do lead to outside, however. It's only the ones in the queen's chamber that have been blocked for some reason. Perhaps, as some Egyptologists believe, that they changed location of the main chamber, so left the ones in the king's chamber open to allow his soul to escape. Curiously, there was also what looks like a grappling hook head found in one of the shafts, which I wonder if that had something to do with the handle-looking things on the stone blocking door. 
Or was it just something left behind by treasure hunters? The pyramids strangely aren't mentioned in any Egyptian texts or hieroglyphs, which is another reason why people point at them not being the original builders. However, in 2011, a sealed cave system discovered by pilots decades prior in a remote part of the Egyptian desert was starting to be excavated, which during the first dig it was established to be some kind of boat storage from the 4th dynasty around 4,600 years ago. But two years later they found papyrus written in hieroglyphics as well as hieratic, and was apparently written by men who participated in the construction of the Great Pyramid. One notably found journal in a person called Mira, mentions stopping at Tura, a town along the Nile famous for its limestone quarry, filling his boat with stone and taking it up the Nile to Giza. Why researchers mainly seem to note this person first off is that he mentions reporting to the noble Ankh Haf, who was known to be the half-brother of Khufu, and was definitely identified as overseeing some of the construction of the Great Pyramid. The papyrus is compelling to say the least, but some people also argue that limestone was used for most constructions, so it might not have been referenced in the Great Pyramid specifically, and some argue that the pyramid may be far older than we think, and that the ancient Egyptians may have found it and even fixed it up with just new casing stones, but not constructed the entire structure. Two mysterious voids were also detected in an experiment conducted by scientists with the Scan Pyramids project, using muon detectors and thermal imaging. The finds were published in November 2017 in Nature, and the smaller void is behind the north face, but its length is unclear from the readings. But the larger void is at least 30 metres long and is located above the Grand Gallery, appearing to incline at around the same sort of angle. So the main two theories seem to be that it's either a new chamber to be explored, or it was just a sealed off construction passage used to lower blocks down from above the King's Chamber and the Grand Gallery during construction. I'm not sure what I think exactly yet, as I like to follow the evidence and logic, but looking at the remaining casing stones as well, they're massive and more finely cut than the exposed core blocks that we see. So if the ancient Egyptians had the capability of at least cutting and placing the casing stones, then it certainly seems feasible for them to have possibly built the whole pyramid if the logistics were in place. Egyptian archaeologists have also found tombs of many of the architects and craftsmen of the Great Pyramid, apparently, who weren't slaves but were highly skilled in their craft, probably considered the best of the best at the time. However, there may have still been the use of slaves for the moving of the stones, but this is still up for debate. We found over 21 unique titles of people like the overseer of the workmen, the overseer of the workmen who dragged the stones, the overseer of the craftsmen and the draftsmen, an inspector of building tombs. All the people who were involved in the construction of the pyramids, we found many titles. The discovery of the tomb of King Tut was important, but it was mainly gold and very little for history. But the discovery of the tombs of the pyramid Builders reconstructed history. So what do you think? Do you think the mainstream narrative is completely true? Just partly true? Or do you think the ancient Egyptians had nothing to do with the construction of the Great Pyramid and possibly just repurposed it when they found it? Well, please leave a comment with your thoughts and subscribe for more ancient history and unsolved mystery topics. Thanks again for watching and take care of yourselves out there. Meanwhile, Dennis's dry drilling goes on. These guys did a hell of a job, Dennis. Well, they've really gone down a fair way. Well, that's pretty impressive for a yeah. few days. Not bad at all. Now you got to get your core out of there. And then just see. There it goes. Wow. Pop right out of there. Oh, look at that. that. Yes. That could be Fourth Dynasty, Dennis. That's right, we could pass it off easily as a Fourth Dynasty core. You got your striations and tapering. And there's and the hole that we wanted all the time. Fantastic. Look at that taper. Look at those striations. Yeah.